Hello there guys, welcome back to Eunice Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video, I hope all of you are doing well today. This is your match review as we start getting into competitive Premier League related football. The season begins next weekend, but before that, whilst all the other leagues have begun to kick off, the Championship, League 1, League 2 and all of those guys, we have the Community Shield that kicked off today and... I've got to say a result that that in at one point in the game, no one really expected to happen. But we've ended it on penalties. It's finished 1-1 during 90, gone straight to pens, and Arsenal have ended up winners. We're going to get into the match review. So it's the first one, as I said, in terms of competitive Premier League-related football. And more match reviews will be coming starting next weekend. So make sure you guys are here for that. To be here for that, there's only one way of making sure you are. And that is to make sure you hit a subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell to be notified once I I've uploaded. On top of that, check out all things Eunice Talks Football. Links are in the description for the socials, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Um, you'll find in the description and they are on screen for you right now. Might have to start calling Twitter X now, haven't I, properly? Because I keep saying Twitter when technically it's now become X. So, yeah. Well, whatever floats your boat, as I normally say. Whatever floats your boat, call it what you want. Let's get cracking. So, before we do as well, there is another video that is coming on later tonight. The news video, we're going to wrap up the entire news of the day. I know people are waiting for what I have to say on Kaiseido. Yeah, I know, I know. I've seen what Brighton CEO have said. I've, we'll get into all of that later because let the day finish out. There might be more developments, but things are starting to get tasty and I've got a lot to say. So make sure you guys are here for that. And like I said, one way to know that I've uploaded is to make sure you've subscribed and hit the bell. So do that. Let's get cracking into this match review. Manchester City. 1, Arsenal 1, finished on penalties 4-1, um, poor penalty shootout for Manchester City, but I have to say on penalties that was kind of expected when you consider who they had left on the pitch, who Arsenal had in terms of their goalkeeper and how the trajectory of that penalty shootout was always going to go, I think it was pretty second nature, but the game itself, I have to be honest, um, from a neutral perspective, because I, I wasn't really supporting anyone, Trying to analyse where both teams are in terms of their levels. Arsenal look good. Arsenal look good, I have to say. Defensively, they look a lot stronger. Um, Timber, we're going to come to. But um, overall, the structure, the way that they were shaped, man, um, Arsenal, defensively, fantastic. Going forward, I would say dominated the game. Especially for the first 70 minutes. Let's say the last 20, Man City managed to you know switch it all on. But... Arsenal, and that was part blame to Arsenal as well, but Arsenal throughout the game had that dominance and we got we go, we go to one point that I as a Chelsea fan have experienced in speaking on t basically every single week last season, which was, you know, you get the chances, chance after chance after chance after chance after chance and then you can't finish them and Arsenal were that for basically 70 minutes. Constant chances, constant movement of the ball, constant domination, was getting into good positions, the build-up play was fantastic, everything was great, they were locking Man City off, they weren't allowing them to breathe, they weren't allowing them to get through in between the lines, the shape was great, carrying the ball was fantastic, Declan Rice is going to get criticised for his game overall, but I would say that in the second half his game dipped, in the first half he looked good, very good. Um, solid, was allowing himself to command that line in terms of not allowing anything through, defence was protected, defence were there ready as well, everything, the shape, the shape of Arsenal was on point, but when they get the ball to the last foot to the final third, they get the ball to their attackers, you can see the threat in Martinelli, you can see the threat in Saka, you can see the ball carrying of Odegaard, you can see, you can see what they're trying to do, they're constantly trying to get the ball diagonally into spaces on the wingers that are coming in, they're using their full backs to, 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 um, to go onto the outside, sometimes to cut in, but more times on the overlap, you can see what they were trying to do, but every time they get to the penalty box, blank, <laughs> blank, blank, blank. And Ortega, you could say, yeah, maybe made a few saves and fair play. But, and you would argue if it was Edison, maybe, you know, it'd be even better. But I would say Kai Havertz be playing up front. And I have to speak on this because I am a Chelsea fan. 
it's funny because Arsenal got Kai Havertz, and we were hearing, "Oh no, you know what? No, they, we're gonna we're gonna find a way. We're gonna have a plan. Arteta has a way. Arteta has a plan. Even Arteta himself said it that we are going to figure it out with Kai Havertz. We are going to figure it out. Not we've already figured out. We have a plan in place. We know what to do. No, we are going to figure it out. That was just at the start of preseason. They've gone through preseason. They've ended up in this competitive game, even though it's just a community shield. But it's a competitive game. Technically, the English Super Cup. When you think about it and Kai Havertz is playing up front as a nine there's a very wise saying a person isn't smart for learning from his or her mistakes a person is smart when they learn from others mistakes learn that that's a life lesson for all of you and it's not as easy said than done because sometimes you do have to go through the experience to know exactly what it's like and, and, and you know, you figure it out for yourself as to how it really went wrong. Whereas looking at it from afar, from someone else's perspective, uh, you might not get the full picture. But if you are smart enough to analyse and know, no, nope, that's not the right way to go. I'm going to avoid that. You're smart. What the hell are you guys doing playing Kai Havertz as a nine? Did you not watch Chelsea for the past two years? Did you? Did you not see what we were? We've tried and tested this. Why do you think we sold him for 65 million? <laughs> Come on. Absolutely crazy. And he was just firing blanks. Blank after blank, blank. We're not surprised. And you know, there's going to be some people, and I've seen them online already, going, oh, Kai Havertz, nah, you know what? He had a good game. He was um, he was linking up well. He dropped deep well enough. Um, you know, he, he, was, he was passing well. Yeah, you say yeah, you have a number nine on the pitch to pass well. Alright, I get that. That's not look, Kai Havertz up front does not work. We, we we keep trying to warn you. No one wants to listen. Fair. Go through it. Go through the experience yourself and find out that you were wrong and we were right in the first place. Because we've been through it and we tried and tested it. Trust me when we say that it, with all due respect, I will forever respect this. He scored the Champions League winning goal. I, I mean, thank you for that. Yeah, absolutely. But he's ridden on that. That's it. He's ridden on that one point alone for three years. <laughs> Good, two years. It's just, it just doesn't work. Anyway, Arsenal, I feel like that's where they could have lost the game. They didn't lose the game, but that's where they could have lost the game. Because if they had someone up top that was actually going to convert, they would have killed this game early. Why? As I said, Arsenal were dominating. They were moving the ball faster. They were moving the ball sharper. They were getting the ball central. They were getting the ball wide. They were doing all sorts in order to create the absolute dominance. Whereas Manchester City, if we shift it to Man City now, Man City looked... What's the word? I don't want to say lacklustre. But they looked... um... I don't have the word. What's the word? They looked like they were tired without actually even trying. It's weird. They just they didn't have the same energy or intensity or, you know, there were moments that, yeah, they were looking to move the ball. But I do have to say, I think it's more credit to Arsenal's defending rather than Manchester City as to why Man City didn't actually create anything for, let's say, 65 or 70 minutes. Man City just looked blank. They just There was nothing. They'd get the ball, they'd move it about. Yes, fantastic. They get it into certain positions. They get to the final third and then they're locked out. They just can't get in. Every time Grealish gets the ball into the box, it's cleared. Every time they're approaching the box, they, they're, they're dispossessed. Every time even the Kovacic, for example, who had a very decent game alongside Rodri, got taken off later, able to drive like we know he can do, and then there's, there's no one. How many times did Manchester City launch an attack and they were constantly outnumbered? Because Arsenal's back four were already in place. Two, um, well, Declan Rice, Odegaard dropping deep in order to help po Thomas Partey as well. You'd end up with a seven or a six versus a Man City 4, sometimes 3, just not enough bodies in there, um, and hence why Erling Haaland didn't see the ball. There was no way for him to receive the ball, and the moments that he did, he didn't really do much of it. Constantly tackled, dispossessed, or passes it, and it's, it's, it's the action's killed. Arsenal, this is what I'm saying, it's more credit to Arsenal when they're defending today rather than Man City not really doing much with it. It was only later when I feel like Mikel Arteta done something that cost Arsenal Almost, almost cost them the game, but cost them that first goal. Because when Manchester City made those substitutions, they brought on, uh, well, we had Foden come on for Grealish, we had Cole Palmer come on for Erling Haaland and KDB coming on for Kovacic. 
that's when it began to shift a little bit because you started to see the impact of Foden, whereas Grealish wasn't really having that impact. Cole Palmer was able to really cut inside a lot more than we were seeing on the right-hand side for Man City for big portions of that game. Alvarez went up front where he's more comfortable. He's not really an attacking midfielder. He managed to go forward. And that's when Man City started to start... They started to create movements. Movements that started to shift and open up Arsenal's defence a little bit. But... The one kicker was what Arteta done when he took off Timber. Best player on the pitch today for me, Timber, was class. Every single thing that came his way, done, taken. Every single tackle that had to be made, made. Every single pass that had to be made, passed it well. Whether it was short or long, Timber was absolutely under control today. Fantastic performance from Timber. He comes off, Tinny comes on. And that left-hand side is there for the taking. Cole Palmer sends a warning when he's able to cut in, take the shot, and it's blocked. Does it again five minutes later, and what happens? Sticks it into the top corner. Well, not really the top corner, but into the side of the net. And it was a, you could say, a mistake from Tierney that got left on his, uh, on his backside because of it. And Cole Palmer's able to cut in whilst Carl Walker dragged the defender out to the corner flag. Finds a space, one touch, sticks it into the far, into the far side of the net. Beautiful goal from Cole Palmer. And then Arteta decides to experiment a little bit more. Takes off Declan Rice, brings on Enketia, takes off um, Gabriel and Kai Havertz to bring on Smithrow and Vieira. And that's when luck sometimes comes your way. I mean, talk about a way to make yourselves get an equaliser in the death of it. A hundred mi- By the way, those eight minutes added on and we were playing the hundredth to the hundred and th- hundred and first minute of the game. How has that happened? But that's when the goal came and that is when the shot was taken by Trossard. Takes a deflection, trickles in very slowly and it's 1-1. I mean, it's just, it happens. Sometimes these things happen. That's the beauty of football. You see these things happen from time to time and you think, oh my God, how did this go down? But it happens and that's what got Arsenal back into the game. If not, we'd be seeing City lift the shield right now. It's what it's what happens. So they get into penalties and as soon as they get to penalties, me personally, and I said it before it was taken, I was like, Arsenal will win this. Ramsdale's a better shot stopper. Ortega's chaotic. Very chaotic, and the penalties showed it for itself because despite the few saves that we saw in the game, during that game he was doing all sorts in terms of uh, just some very rash decision-making. You know, going in for all sorts of challenges, kicking the ball, putting Kai Havertz and the other Arsenal player on their, on, on their backsides, um, you know, making some drastic decisions himself. He's not very composed. Well, I don't know why Edison didn't play this. And I understand, you know, you've got cup goalkeepers. But this is the community shield. It's a game. It's a trophy to win. I mean, you play your best team. And that's what Arsenal did in the end. Um, but it drags Arsenal back into the game. It finishes 1-1. Goes to penalties. And just, yeah, Arsenal's penalties. Fantastic. Whereas uh, Manchester City, KDB, you could say I had the right idea. Didn't execute it. Hits the bar. And then get to the final penalty taker and he's missed it. It's, it's, it's what it is. Sometimes it is. it just happens with penalties. It's a lottery. You don't it can go anyway. But overall, when you think about it, logically, did who deserved to win this game? I would say based on performance, Arsenal did deserve to win this game. But they almost killed themselves for it. They almost shot themselves in the foot. It was that last minute equaliser with a deflection that somehow got Arsenal back into it and they won the penalty shoot out fair and square. So if there's one lesson to learn from this, it's that Arsenal need to analyse their attacking options. They had chances today to kill the game much earlier. Sounds familiar to me, trust me. I've been saying the same thing for Chelsea for two years. <laughs> in terms of us, 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 us having someone up front in order to just convert the chances. We would have killed many games long before we actually lost them or drew or dropped points if it hadn't been for actually having someone up top that was going to convert them. Arsenal today was that, but they still managed to get the job done, even in the death of it, by getting that 100th minute equaliser. So I would say Arsenal, with Jesus now out, need to possibly go into the market to try and find themselves a striker if they even think of using Kai Havertz as a regular striker I'm going to say this once I'm going to say this for Man United as well because they got Mason Mount these guys that people are waiting for them to perform they're waiting they're, they're, they're going to be patient they're going to no they're going to come good they're going to come good you're going to have games where yeah they do score Kai Havertz, for example, will score. He's not going to go goalless. He's not going to go assistless. But the numbers are going to be so low by the end of the season you're going to look back and think oh my god what did we do we lived through it. We know. So this is why I'm saying for Arsenal, I feel like going into the season, they've got everything ready. Defensively, they've got it ready. In midfield, they've got it ready. On the flanks, they've got it ready. They need to get themselves a forward that's going to convert. They do that, 
And for me, for me, right now, Arsenal will be title favourites. That's my honest opinion. Manchester City are always going to dip in terms of level. They're not going to maintain the same level they had after winning the treble. You cannot do it. It's impossible. Don't think that they're going to go and pursue a treble again. It's not going to happen. It's, it's hard to go back to back in the league, let alone actually try and keep the same level that got you the treble last season. It's not going to happen. They are going to dip. So this league, this season is going to be a lot more competitive, trust me. And I do feel like some of the players that have left Manchester City and still might leave Manchester City is what's going to impact them if they don't get good replacements in. And to be fair, they've got themselves Gvardio, for example. They got Kovacic in. I see him more as rotational rather than actually coming in to, to make a start in 11 spot. But overall, yes, it's Man City. The quality is there. They will be up there. But the level will have come down a notch. 100%. And today was a proof of that. They almost nicked it in a game where you think they didn't deserve it. But that's the power of City. You allow them to breathe even for a second and they can punish you. However... They're not going to be as ruthless as last season. So this is something to bear in mind. Going into the new season starting next week, we now know what both teams seem like they're looking at. But congrats to Arsenal in terms of the community shield. And um, we'll see how it's going to start kicking off on day one of the Premier League. I will be here for it. Make sure you guys are here for that too. Let me know your thoughts down below on everything in regards to Arsenal and Manchester City. Um, and... Let the season begin. This was the opener, I would say. Congrats to Arsenal on what is technically a trophy. Technically. Fans don't really look at it that way, but it does count. Um, and they beat Man City for it, so fair play. And um, we'll see how the new season's going to start. So let me know your thoughts down below. Make sure you guys are here for video number two later tonight. And it's going to be that news video that everyone is waiting for in regards to Caicedo. And not just Caicedo, but... All the things happening elsewhere and that might still happen from now up until tonight. So make sure you guys are here for all the big stories and I'll give you my thoughts on that. To be here for that, you have to subscribe. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. Smash like button if you did enjoy this and I will see all of you later on. Have a good one, people. See you lot then. Take care and peace.